Hello and welcome to An Academy and this is our channel Cat for MBA. I am Advocate Rushikesh Kate, your educator for GK and Current Affairs section for various entrance exams. And today with me is a very special guest, Mr. Karan Shah, who is uh, Executive Director for Precision Camshafts. He is an engineer from Purdue University and also an MBA graduate from Harvard Business School. Mr. Karan, on behalf of the entire team of An Academy Cat for MBA, I formally welcome you on board. It is truly a pleasure to have you with us here today. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Rishikesh. Thank, Thank you so much, much for having me on this platform. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, pleasure to interact with your students and uh, aspiring MBA candidates. So very nice to be here. I am sure this is going to be a great conversation. Uh, Karan, thank you so much once again for doing this. So uh, Karan, you have an extraordinary, incredible journey from Solapur, which is uh, also a textile hub in the country, to the Purdue University for engineering and all the way to Harvard. Tell us more about it. I want uh, we and all the learners on an academy want to know how did it all start? <laughs> sure. Um, so I'll give you a little bit of background about myself, right? Um, I come. I'm born and brought up in Solapur. Um, I've studied here till I was 18 years old, basically till 12th standard. Uh, and along the way, a couple of things have uh, kind of prompted me to take the decisions and take the course of my career over the next 10, 15 years. Uh, two main things would be one has been always that one internal kida in my mind to understand how things work. Uh, from a very young age, I was very inquisitive, uh, very curious to know why do certain things work the way they do, uh, which is kind of why I said that in 11th standard, I would like to take up science as the stream and perhaps therefore eventually ended up studying engineering because of that same curiosity. Along the way also what an interesting journey that was taking place at the same time was that my father had started the, our business precision camshaft uh, around 1994 which is when I was three or four years old and so from a very young age I've seen the business grow from zero to what it is today uh, and because it is an automotive component manufacturing business an engineering business I think somewhere uh, that had started from a very young age that I wanted to pursue engineering to get not just a better understanding of what we do, uh, but of the world and how the, how the world works, right? Uh, so that, that's the reason to kind of pursue engineering. Uh, and I decided uh, at a very young age, obviously I was 17 when, I, when we decided, me and my family who were the support system at the time, uh, to say that going to the US uh, 10,000 miles away from home at that age was a big decision, uh, but there was a good reason for that, right? We, what we did was before I actually decided to pursue engineering, uh, we happened to visit the US uh, as a holiday and we went and visited a few of the campuses, including Purdue University, to see what it is all about, what makes engineering so different there uh, than what we typically see in India. Uh, and what we saw that, number one, is the tremendous amount of exposure that I would potentially get because of the wide variety of people that were coming there from different parts of the world, different perspectives, all of that. But more importantly, on the way engineering was taught there. When we spoke to a few professors there, we, we realized very quickly that uh, a lot of the theory uh, is not restricted to the textbooks, but is more practical driven, more application oriented, uh, and therefore uh, decided that, you know, taking this big leap um, at that young age uh, would actually prove out to be very beneficial in the future. Uh, coming down to Purdue University, why that itself? Uh, it's one of the top 10 universities for engineering in the US. Uh, a lot of uh, very, very good for mechanical engineering, which is what I studied and also for aeronautical engineering. You might be surprised that 50% of the astronauts who went to space from the US, from NASA, 50% of them have studied at Purdue, including Neil Armstrong. So uh, one of our buildings is called Armstrong Hall of Engineering. So it's, I think it was really a privilege being in that school, uh, learning from the best uh, faculty and being in the best environment. So that was uh, the reason to kind of pursue engineering. Uh, after that, I actually got placed through a campus placement at Cummins headquarters uh, in the US itself. So they're based in uh, Columbus, Indiana. That's where their headquarters is. Uh, and I, I, got a, I got a very, very interesting job, which was actually working on the shop floor as a manufacturing engineer. 
um uh, no i didn't want to go into that office job kind of space I really wanted to you know when you say get your hands dirty uh, i would often come back home with my entire clothes soaked in in uh, machine oil uh, but that was a really enriching experience uh, more so because of the kind of situation i was in uh, there were only about four or five people at that time handling an entire production line of machining and i got to learn a lot in that experience so more than the quantity of time that i spent at the job the quality uh, of the experience was absolutely fantastic so uh, that was the experience at cummins uh, now obviously the next step was i wanted to eventually come back to india uh, one because i attached family is here uh, the business is here and i always wanted to come back and be a part of it uh but my father had always told me and mother also had always told me that if you are not educated and if you don't fit the needs of the job uh you don't come back you better continue working there so uh what what uh, prompted me to kind of look at the mba now uh having that engineering experience uh having that engineering education from a premier institute like purdue i really wanted to get that all round management training right uh, we i wanted to uh look at the world outside of the engineering specialty that i was in um of course wanted to understand a lot of these skills that you would typically learn in an mba right strategy marketing finance all of these different things which i was not exposed to in the past so i wanted to train myself formally in that before i came back uh, so if you look at it it's a full circle uh, i started like i said in my childhood looked at my dad growing the company somewhere had the aspiration to be a part of it and then the engineering the cummins job the mba and all of that kind of uh, you know complete it was a full circle so um that that's a little bit of the background on um, <laughs> why engineering did, yeah now that is surely one hell of a journey karan uh, i just want to know why why did you choose to do mba what drived you towards pursuing uh, your mba and specifically why harvard business school yeah so i think uh, I'll, to answer that uh, i answered a little bit of that in your previous question right uh, where i said that i was very much when you are studying at an engineering school uh, you are always with the same type of people you are talking about the same things uh, you are typically uh, in the same in, when you are in an industry for example the automotive things more or less revolve around that uh, one of the big things for me was to get out of this bubble and really get a lot of exposure to the outside world how people think how and i knew that going into a business school in the us uh, you know you're going to have consultants there you're going to have private equity guys investment bankers doctors lawyers all kinds of people who will challenge the way that you think right uh, and i think that that was the driving factor behind looking at the mba obviously besides this you're looking at tactical real skills to get is right from how do you look at a balance sheet to how do you analyze a pnl statement uh, how do you do valuations to uh, strategic frameworks and problem solving techniques and things like that so that was the real reason but now if, when you ask me why hbs itself why harvard business school there the process was really interesting so when when i decided to pursue an mba uh, i only wanted to apply to the top 3 or 4 programs uh, and i said you know it's a long shot i'll be very honest with you it was a long shot because i had only 2 years or 2 and a half years of experience uh, and it's quite difficult to get into these programs and i said let me apply and if i don't get in i'll try again a few years down the line after i've worked a little bit more in different positions etc and my one of my top four choices including say stanford wharton and booth was harvard business school um and obviously you know this is uh, it's the greatest business school there is um but i think the application process and getting there uh, was something that i'll describe in more detail further but i think if we all in fact when the dean of hbs when i was there um was an indian uh, gentleman called dr nitin noria and he in fact he had got admission into um, mit as well as harvard and his parents told him harvard nahi jayega to you have to go to harvard you can't choose anything else besides that so for me uh funny enough we it was a great interview process a great application process and i got selected at that time which was you know uh, really privileged to be there so so uh, 
Great, great. Fantastic, uh, Karan. I already uh, get a feeling that this is going to be an extraordinary conversation way ahead when, you, when we go inside. Uh, just excuse me for a bit, Karan. I think there is some kind of technical issue from my side. I'll fix it uh, in no time. Okay. Uh, everybody in the comment section, please uh, confirm if the voice is still echoing. Yes, guys. Is it still echoing? In, uh, the voice is still echoing. Can you, uh, Nitesh, Sagar, Ankita, Mandar, can you please confirm in the comment section? Yes. Okay. Fantastic. Fantastic. So, Karan, uh, now yeah. we all know that uh, you've already told that uh, Harvard Business School or HBS is a very long shot and it's not a piece of cake uh, for everybody. Me, along with the learners uh, of an academy, want to know how did you prepare for this long shot? What was your yeah. strategy? How did you dedicate yourself for this long shot? Right. Um, so obviously, um, most business schools are looking at you as a full package uh, and not one part of your application. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about all the steps that go into it, right? Yes. Um, number one is obviously they're looking at your undergraduate GPA, uh, which after you're done with it, you can't change much. But I think obviously they're looking at saying that you need to have a certain GPA in your uh, undergraduate degree to get there. Uh, the second is obviously the GMAT process. Um, I had to study for the GMAT while I was working at Cummins. Uh, the great part was very similar to an academy, which you're providing a lot of these virtual classes, which is amazing to see now. Um, I had the opportunity to take all of these GMAT classes online while I was still studying. Uh, sorry, while I was still working. Yes. Uh, so the process is, I would say similar. The GMAT exam is similar to some of the entrance exams that you would take here in India. Uh, so you have a quantitative section and you have a reasoning section and you have a writing section, analytical section, all different parts of the exam. Uh, and it, it does take quite a bit of time to prepare for this, right? You want to make sure that the one attempt that you give to this, or maybe two, if you need to, uh, is, is, is the best one to start with. So you have to go through the grind of understanding each section, as you obviously uh, most of the students would know. I what my I think the one thing that I take back and I say that I one thing that benefited a lot was taking these mock virtual exams again and again and again. Uh, so they obviously GMAT is a computer uh, computer aided exam. It's taken online uh, and the exam is um, is actually intelligent, right? As you go through the exam, the questions, the uh, intensity, the difficulty of it changes. Uh, so when I often took these paper based exams. Uh, the score that came out of it was typically a little bit higher than what you would get on this online platform because it adapts to what you do. So my strategy at least was uh, whenever I was back from work, even if it meant spending an hour and a half, two hours every day, I would make sure that I take at least one practice test every other day, at least every alternate day so that you're always kind of prepping for that final day. Uh, so that was kind of the strategy on taking the GMAT. That was obviously part of the application. What most business schools say, I'm sure in India also, is that um, this the, a good score on the GMAT is a hygiene factor. You have to have it. Uh, it's not that uh, when, for example, at HBS, I know that there were students who came in with even a 600 out of 800 on the GMAT and some that came in with a 790, right? So from 80th percentile all the way to 100 or 99th percentile. But it's not make or break. Uh, it's one of the things that a business school is looking at is a good GMAT score. Right. So that obviously I had, I took the virtual classes and I took the exam, obviously did well on it and therefore uh, could apply it to some of these schools. Two of the major things after that were the essay and the interview process. I think I would like to spend a little bit time on this. Surely, surely. Um, so on the essay part, right, each business school uh, has different essays. So to give you an example, um, uh, University of Chicago Booth said, present whatever you want to do for the next five years of your life uh, in four PowerPoint slides. And why will an MBA help you get to these goals? Uh, for example, Stanford said, why do you want to get an MBA at Stanford and how will it change your life going forward? The Harvard Business School essay was the most open-ended and thus made it the most difficult one actually. What the essay said was, uh, we've read everything about you. 
we've read your resume we've seen your academic transcripts we've seen everything about you through the rest of your application what else do you want to tell us to make you a eligible candidate at this business school so this is a, actually a very difficult question because it's open ended right. they had no word limit it was not restricted to 800 words right as much as you want or as little as you want but what i want to presentations or so right what i want to encourage students who are listening right now is to go to these applications these business school applications to the us you can go it's all free to look at and to download the applications just look at the type of questions that come up on these application essays and what you will see more or less they always end up at one common factor is that they are all based on introspection right uh, these business schools do not want you to write some life katha or something like that they just want to know have you thought enough yourself have you ref self reflected enough to make sure that you are going to come to this school and how is it going to add value to your future and how are you going to add value to the school while you are there for 2 years so that essay process was very very interesting um and just to give you an example in in my essay they said you know i we've read that you have a great gpa good gmat score your boss has given a nice recommendation what else do you want to tell us and my answer to that was you know i've seen um solapur the city that i grew up in i uh, used to be a you know textile hub uh, doesn't have that same reputation any longer uh, in whatever way that i can or we can as a business at pcl would like to put it back on that same stature and that same map uh, that it once had that glory and honor of so it it wasn't it had nothing to do with business fundas and my great billion dollar ideas or things like that but a real uh, thing that i was you know wanting to say in that application so i i really recommend all students to go and look at these application essays and the questions and then think about these answers yourself uh, give it give and business schools typically say you know spend about one month at least in writing this essay don't don't write it immediately and submit it so it it, it tells you what they want so and fine yes yeah go sorry ahead, go ahead, yes, no ahead. no no and finally i think it was the interview process which was the you know the most daunting of it all uh, so at at hbs i will give you an example about 10 15000 people apply every year uh, about only i think 1500 or 1600 get interviewed and half of those get actually selected into the classroom um so this whole process it's more of a behavioral interview so they want to know how do you think on your feet uh, how how can you maneuver situations uh, things like that right they are not looking for real real skills at that point of time and i had the great uh, luxury i would say of doing a lot of these mock interviews with my father Uh, and i was in the us at that time and he would be up here at 4:30 5 o'clock in the morning doing these mock interviews with me over and over again over and over again until it came down to the last where he said you cannot have that um while you're talking or, or while you're giving that answer or you need to think more clearly you a lot of the good advice that i got was saying if somebody asks you a question and you don't know the answer to it you can say to the person give me 30 seconds to think about it instead of just coming up with blurting an answer out right. so all of these things kind of helped and the actual interview was me and two ladies two women in the room interviewing me one of them was asking me all of the questions which are you know what are your goals um how how do you see an mba helping you get to those um etc etc uh, whereas the other person who was sitting was not speaking a single word but only observing me observing my body language how am i talking how am i presenting myself am i lying uh, am i making things up all of these things they were catching and these are guys they are experts at doing this so right. this interview process was quite scary it was 30 minutes but it felt like a lifetime uh, but that was you know that was the process so like i said right from the undergrad gpa to your gmat to your essays to the interview it all kind of takes a good 6 to 8 months to prepare for this and to you know i was i remember i remember very distinctly i was at work on the plant floor um on one day in december in 2013 when i got an email and the email was only saying the answer is yes you have been admitted so that was uh, quite a quite a great uh, feeling after all of that listening to you and uh, uh, thinking about this uh, particular event i got goosebumps so <laughs> i'm sure when the learners will receive this letters or emails uh, about yeah. they being selected in their favorite or desired institute i yeah. sure the feeling must be about the clouds 
absolutely Karan, uh, i would really want you to focus more on the selection of the colleges now i'm sure you must have uh, applied to world class <coughs> universities, uh, universities across uh, usa uh, let's yeah. say uh, harvard is one of them stanford and other yeah. uh, universities how did you go through the selection process yeah. or uh, selection yeah. of institutions sure so i'll talk about both actually when i was applying for un- undergrad engineering colleges also i had the same selection process as i had with mba programs uh talking about the overall selection process right uh, what typically is told and i'm sure you are educating uh, students in a similar way is that we say that you know when you apply to colleges apply to three categories of colleges one is kind of uh, an easy uh, easy one to get into uh, one is a target which i i think i'll get into but maybe a little bit difficult and one is a stretch college right which is really aspirational but i want to apply there and let's see if we can get there so you apply to three categories uh, and hopefully you get into the bottom ones you are happy you have a you have a kind of safe blanket uh, and then you have your higher categories so when i was applying to engineering schools i did the same uh, applied to a lot of colleges virginia tech university of michigan university of illinois texas purdue etc but end of the day i think going there to campus and seeing it myself made me choose purdue although maybe it was ranked one or two less than some of the other colleges that i had gotten into so that was that but when it came to business school for me it was a little bit of a different um, selection criteria like i said a little bit earlier right i only wanted to give it the best i wanted to apply only to the top 4 colleges and if i didn't get in i didn't get in it's fine uh, and i wanted to i had because i had you know at the time i had time i had i was only 23 years old i said you know i can always repeat this process maybe in 2 years from now so i applied to schools that i knew would add value so i applied to stanford uh, which is very uh, heavy on the tech side of things because of where it is located uh, etc uh, wharton also i applied to which is university of pennsylvania it is heavily focused on the finance side of things Uh, i applied to wharton uh, sorry to booth in at the university of chicago which is kind of a blend of everything and obviously to harvard uh, because you know truly what i what, when i looked at all of them they all specialize in something uh, and they all of them give you a degree at the end of it as in india where you say you know you have an mba in finance or an mba in marketing we at, at hbs you don't have that you are just a masters of business administration from harvard business school that's it what the great part is in your second year you can choose to you know concentrate on a certain subject but they don't write that on your degree so which is you know something that was very attractive for me because i said i don't want to be a you know a focused mba on something but rather a little bit of everything so, so maybe that is why uh, they are called the mecca of business education yeah it is <laughs> so i'm sure yeah. the learners might have uh, got an idea how to come out of the dilemma of selecting which college you want to go yeah so i would like that's what i would say right if you have the liberty of time and if you can continue working wherever you are or studying a little bit more in your undergrad then you can take a few attempts but otherwise then you can look at you know safety colleges target colleges and stretch colleges that's how you you could look at it great 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 so next question uh, i want to ask you karan what do you expect out of an mba program how can you explore your potential there yeah so um going into hbs i think one of the things that before i talk about you know what uh, what i what i expect out of an mba i want to talk a little bit also about what what i uh, experienced at harvard uh, because this was something very different right this was very different than your typical business schools and i wanted to experience i experienced it and i'd love to share it with Uh, all the audience and the students here yes. one of the most interesting things there um was that every single uh, subject every single concept was taught using a real case study oh. not a single not a single and i highlight this not a single concept was taught using a theory or using a textbook or using a presentation including subjects like accounts and finance which are number driven were all taught using cases so over the two years that i spent there we studied over 500 cases oh my god that's interesting and imagine reading three every day and going into class and sitting in front of that professor who can cold call you and say karan i hope you've read the case uh, the business is about so and so so and so you are now the ceo of this company you are the decision maker what are you going to do in that situation so what what so now when i come to expectations what do i expect right 
the expectation is that they put you in these situations in business schools where you as the decision maker need to think of all of the holistic impacts that your decision could have on the business it's not one thing or the other you have to as the owner as the business driver have think of the holistic picture which is what they teach us and the great thing is you're sitting with 90 other students in the class who are just waiting to pounce on you right because and the most important thing that they teach us is that when you make a point you must learn how to hold it you must learn how to hold your point and debate it till you know somebody proves you logically or scientifically otherwise right. so what what is the expectation is that how do you quickly assess a problem and come up with a viable solution in in the in the circumstances that you have right that is what the mba is teaching you besides all of the you know tactical skills etc 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 so and the good part is in while you are in business school you you are in a very low stake setting right because of something that you say in class a company won't go bankrupt or somebody something bad might not happen but they teach you over and over through 500 cases like this that you will be in a real situation like this at one point of your career and then you need to think of the big picture uh, and then take this uh, take a decision which is beneficial so that what w- the expectation from an mba program is really thinking uh, putting the right frameworks in people's minds um, thinking about uh, how do you say without without um without taking too much of an effort you have to think of the plan b and the plan c and the plan d of what happens because of certain decisions that you take right uh, and interesting part is you have so many different types of people in the class that each one has a different way of looking at it right. so for, for, imagine we had a class for example where a company is going bankrupt uh, and there are some engineers in the class there are finance people there are lawyers there are doctors each one has a very different perspective on this which me as an engineer if i were only to think i would think in a very different way right but that exposure is what is you know the key uh, aspect of that uh, business school uh, program so i think that's what you would take away I, i think other than that what it also gives you is you don't typically get to hear and see about uh, global businesses right Uh, typically when you are in only in your city on your state you are generally very aware of how business is done in your part of the world in your state in your city right. etc but when you suddenly talk about things like how is business conducted in japan very different culture tremendously different culture to a very opposite culture in the us um so how how is business conducted globally because when you then go back into your um business or you go back into your career you know how to deal with these different nuances of global doing business globally right uh, so that was that's a big thing i think another one that we talk about a lot that what what do we expect out of business school graduates right we when we hire somebody at our organization also we are not saying that we want you to be an expert in camshafts right. we don't want you to be an expert in any of the technology that we do or any of the processes any of the manufacturing no none of it what we expect you to do be is a good communicator and a good presenter i think that is also something that an mba program does teach you it right. asks you to put together all your thoughts onto a onto a single page or onto pre- a presentation and present it to your professors to your peers etc which is something that often is lacking uh, i would say in graduates uh, in india because you have a lot of great ideas you have the technical know how you have all of it but you can't put it on paper or you can't present it well, then you know all of that knowledge kind of is not worth much so i would say you know when you are when you are in an mba program for students who are aspiring to go there i would say pick up these things as key aspects you know you will always somebody will always train you and in that specific industry that specific training will be given but the expectation is that you should be able to think on your feet you should be able to think quickly come up with solutions to problems rather than you know discussing problems over and over again that's something that we also say uh, as the communication skills interpersonal skills how do you deal with your peers how do you deal, deal with customers with suppliers all of these things are i think the softer side of skills uh, which i think technical education doesn't teach you but a business school education certainly can 
so particularly what you are saying is that a mba program in real wales will always keep you on your toes so that it you will have an, it should uh, holistic uh, approach towards uh, your career or the problem that we were talking about and i think it's it's up to it's up to the student right who is in the business school to make the most out of it uh, i think what you can often see is that you how do you say an mba program is not a one fit all one size fits all solution right it it means something different for everybody right um, to somebody it might mean that i'm in a job right now i need a career progression i should get an mba somebody says i need it as you know uh, to shift industries i am in the tech industry i want to go to finance so therefore i want to get an mba uh, it can be many different thing i want to start my own business and therefore want the business frameworks so the the uh, how do you say the objective can be different from ev- for everybody but you have to know that you have to really know that before going on and of course if it's just a check in the box it's a totally different uh, story but then knowing what you're getting into and then making the most of it because i see a lot right now and i'm very impressed with some of the um business schools in india also where there's a lot available right now right it's not just that theory or that case or that whoever i think what is important and what you should get out of it is that incredible network of professors and alumni who have come out of your college uh, ideally you should have great access to them when you have a real problem in your career or in your pro- uh, on your business you should be able to pick up the phone and say you know i graduated from the same college that you did can you help me here that network is absolutely key uh, besides that i think a lot of business schools have different clubs that you can join you know i was part of for example the family business club at harvard uh, because in typical business school you don't talk about the problems of family businesses so i was part of that to understand how that dynamic works there are so many uh, business plan competitions pitch decks or so many, or pitch competitions so many of these opportunities that students should make most out of right it's you can and like i said it's it's up to the student to decide how much you want to get out of it uh, but i would rather say i would always say that try to make better use of all of these so called peripheral um, uh, services or these you know things that this institute can offer rather than just focus on uh, you know the theory and the degree of it so fantastic fantastic karan uh, last question from my side then we will move towards the question answer session i am sure the yeah. learners are waiting to ask a lot of questions to you yeah but uh, how can an mba program help the aspiring entrepreneurs of modern times yeah and great Since question so one of uh, the entrepreneurs <coughs> from the modern time young and dynamic uh, i have been receiving comments they are praising uh, so much for your work how how would you uh, uh, get on this question karan yeah so i think it's a great question um so i think an mba or business school cannot really teach you to become an entrepreneur right what 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 are the basic um elements of becoming an entrepreneur i think it's the passion for what you do uh, it's the grit with which you do it uh, with the amount of hard work that you're willing to put and of course the risks that you're willing to take on as an entrepreneur i think those are things that you cannot be somehow taught right those are part of you um those cannot be taught however i think modern day mbas uh, in today's day as compared to say 20 30 40 years ago have changed dramatically right you you do see a lot of new businesses coming out of business schools uh, i mean there are so many examples of billion dollar businesses in the us that students have started while they are in the classroom and they have become big today i think what like i said again uh, in the before what the mba does is it can sharpen your skills it can hone you in a way uh, that you are better prepared for business right it can give you the frameworks to think of it can give you templates it can talk about how do you build teams how do you retain teams how should you uh, for example remunerate a, a certain person in your uh, in your team all of these things um, are you know these are there are so many inevitable challenges in entrepreneurship but an mba can help you frame them properly Right. when you're going into uh, a great example of this is my wife actually uh, who who also studied uh, a similar it's not an mba but a very similar ma- masters in management program at one of the top um, uh, colleges called babson college also in the us yes. and she started her own business after coming uh, graduating from that 
and uh, it's in the luxury fashion space which is very different from what she studied actually so she also studied engineering and then this ma masters in management and then fashion right uh, but what the mba taught her is to think critically uh, is to have a problem solving kind of attitude always uh, and again coming back to that same point of network right the amount of exposure she got or i got when when in business school to really think big it 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 allows you to think big to think outside the box to say you know if if companies are worth billions and billions of dollars coming out of this why can't i take that extra step and then you have all of the things that you learn in uh, in frameworks there that can help you you know establish your business for sure an mba is more is probably more beneficial to somebody who's looking at career progression uh, but definitely can help entrepreneurs as well great amazing amazing yeah. thank you so much uh, karan for uh, an insightful uh, session that you have told now all the learners uh, in the comment section you can throw your questions uh, to karan he is ready to take your can, question guys can i can i add one thing i just wanted to give some i just wanted to clear some ideas about some certain sure. mba programs sure, so just a ahead. minute before we get into that right go ahead go ahead two, two two things which i think are really important to uh, know for you know young students who are looking at business school programs right now um one is i really really do recommend uh, that a lot of students typically do your undergraduate uh, degrees whether engineering law whatever it is and then go straight for mbas right uh, i really would recommend that as it is almost mandatory in the us that you have some kind of work experience before you go to business school uh, i think students should do that in india as well and the reason i say that is because when you are sitting in business school and they're teaching you about strategy and about accounting and about marketing and things like that you have never seen them in your life right or or even things like operations and things like all of these things production you've never seen these in your life so you don't know how to correlate you don't know how to connect the dots you are sitting there as as um, blank as you were before you got there right and at the end of the two years i don't know how it has seeped in for you to actually um, you know use in real life so i actually say to myself that i i studied i worked for 2 years and then i got my mba and then i I've, i've come back to uh, precision here a lot of my classmates have studied have worked for more than 4 years oh. and gre great that it all worked out for me but maybe if i had worked for longer in a higher position it would have actually been more beneficial because i would have known more about the world to connect to the things that i learned in class okay. so that's one and just one last thing is that this uh, the the i want to break a myth okay foreign mbas getting an mba abroad right. uh, typically is seen you know as as the golden ticket to the good life right um i just want to make everybody aware and cautious uh, that in today's day and age especially it's very dynamic especially with this whole covid situation things are changing so much uh, that getting an mba abroad is an expensive process uh, it does take up a lot of time money resources efforts all of that uh, and it doesn't assure you of anything even uh, my uh, from hvs uh, have not gotten jobs after graduating for variety of reasons right it's not for incompetent variety of reasons but it's important to keep that in mind uh, that you spend a lot of money and time on something like this and you should think of roi which is something that they will teach you there right right so hopefully uh, all the learners will take up on your advice karan yeah yes okay so the first question has come up already uh, karan is <coughs> that uh, sir a little spe specific question this is question from sayani so okay. sir what hr career looks like abroad career growth and opportunities what hr careers looks like abroad yes yes <laughs> little very specific question right. uh, but no i think what i'll do is I, i can like i said i was just talking about this earlier right? right um getting getting a degree abroad is rather i would say rather easy right out of um, european business schools you have a lot of american business schools uh, where you can pay a lot of money to get into these colleges and you can graduate and do well and all of that but it doesn't guarantee you any kind of job prospect it doesn't guarantee you any kind of career progression etc etc you have to kind of prove it uh, with different in different ways right just as business schools don't only look at your gmat right. employers are not only looking at where you went to business school correct 
so i would really strongly suggest that you look if you are for ex- if i give you an example if you are going to the us uh, to pursue your mba and you want to work there further i think you should study the uh, economic and the so- social uh, environment there at this point of time are visas being granted to indian students is there a demand for mba students at this point of time how is industry doing so everywhere will be different right so if you asked if you asked say 8 months ago or 10 months ago ki is hospitality a great industry be in absolutely it is today is it i i don't think many people will say that we are hiring in the hospitality industry right, right. so very very dynamic and it's hard to answer your exact question but study the country study the school a lot you every school does put out all these statistics ki you know how kitne percent log place hote hain kahan place hote hain greatest thing you can do is write to the business schools you, trust me they are very very open about this so you have an admissions at harvard.edu or whatever you can write to them and typically they will answer if you have valid questions uh, saying you know i am applying to this school i am looking for this job after that i am in this job can i switch they will be very helpful so you know use use resources that are freely av- available and it's it's always better to ask and then get rejected rather than not asking at all and get rejected okay however yeah. rejection is not a question i hope all the learners get it yeah, yeah absolutely okay. absolutely so the next question is from nitesh uh, he says that sir you said that you took up engineering because you were curious and you had early exposure to business and management yeah. this is very common interview question is why did you choose mba after engineering yeah i think i answered that early on right i said that i was very um, the engineering uh, knowledge and the work experience that i had after that was very specific to the automotive industry i was working in that um, etc etc right and i wanted to get out of that bubble i think a great just to give you an example of one of the interview questions i think what are they looking for right when they you asked me earlier what are you looking for in an in a, in a student yes yes the interviewer actually asked me ki karan uh, you have spoken 30 minutes you have spoken about the automotive industry and engines and camshafts and cummins and this and that and whatever 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 and she said just imagine from tomorrow there are no cars anymore hai nahi gaadiyan nahi hai there are no two wheelers there's nothing at all what are you going to do karan she said and my answer to that was ki rather than what am i going to do how are you going to get to work if there are no cars and uh, two wheelers <laughs> right so i think that's that's the kind of things that people are looking for and not exactly answering the question but being like i said being on your toes uh, thinking on your feet yes i hope that uh, helps nitesh uh, yeah. <laughs> the next question is from ronit uh, he says that uh, sir my work experience is 5.5 years now into uh, accounting and finance uh, i am interested to do my masters in finance which b school <coughs> should a candidate like me focus on which b school yes which b school i think some very very good business schools in the us uh, like i spoke about um, columbia is great uh, wharton is great hbs is great i think they're all fantastic business schools but if you are looking also at india i think all of the iims are really great schools you have isb in hyderabad so all of them are really really very good schools uh, that you should consider and i think you are at you, you have a great um, you know great uh, work experience of five and a half years that i think will put you in a very different league when you are in school because you come come with a lot of experience you come with a lot of knowledge which you can actually you know build upon rather than starting from scratch so I, easiest thing for me to do uh, for me to suggest is business schools in finance and you will get the answer to that okay but however uh, uh, like uh, you had uh, answered this question earlier when i uh, asked you about the selection process how did you go for uh, yeah. stanford how did you go for uh, harvard i yeah. think that answers the question right yeah. that you do your own research, research. check out what yeah. are the requirements that they want and then you and, can select the and there are some really good resources available right they they you you can put a lot of filters when you are researching you can say i i want a school which is only in the us i don't want to look at european schools i don't want to look at indian schools i want to look only on the east coast of the us i want to look for a school that is in the top 50 ranks i want to look at a school which has the highest return on investment all of these different filters are available and you can do a lot of research it's 
I mean, including, you know, how much does it cost to stay? For example, you can go to a business school in, say, state of Indiana and to live there. Uh, but if you go to the same in, for example, New York, it's very expensive to stay there. But all of this is there. It's very readily available. Right, right, right. So uh, the next question is from Nitesh Karan. Yeah. Sir, while talking, you said that how quickly you could think in a critical situation and take a, situ a, situ a decision. But not everyone is same, sir. Uh, one person can take a decision which is great and uh, effective. But another person uh, can, who can take a day may come up with more effective way to tackle. Wouldn't that be injustice to second person? That is what his question is. Uh, I wouldn't say... I'm saying that you need to take decisions quickly. I don't mean instantly, right? I don't mean you have a problem and you need to solve it right now, immediately. Right. I'm not, you can, it can, it, it's relative. It can be, it depends on that situation. It depends on the problem. It can be, it, if there's a fire in your building, it has to be an immediate decision. Right. If there is a customer relationship over 24 hours, if there is a bigger strategic level decision that you need to take, it can be a week, it can be a month. It can be very different. The point is that you need to get to that decision with all, all of the, um, how do you say, all of the clearly understood. Right. You, as, as the owner or as the decision maker of the business, you can't stop at your table. That's how it's said, right? You cannot go back. You can't go back in time and you can't blame somebody else. Right. So you need to carefully think of that decision till you get there and understand that me doing this can have all of these effects. And if something goes wrong, am I, am I willing to live with these? If something goes wrong, do I have a plan B? Do I have a plan C? All of these things are what you need to think of. Not, I, I certainly would say, I wouldn't say that take a decision. That's, it's very relative to say that, right? Right, right, right. So guys, any more questions for uh, Mr. Karan? However, there is one learner uh, who yeah. wants to know your uh, uh, GMAT score. The question My GMAT from, score was not the greatest. It was 700. So uh, the question is from Sonia. She said, sir, your GMAT score. And Sonia, uh, here is your answer. His GMAT yeah. score was 700. So, so like, like I said before, right? It's it's not it's not make or break. It's it's something that needs to be there. It needs to be a good score, but it doesn't have to be a 99th percentile every time. Right, right. So the next question is from Akash. He says, sir, I am Akash, a student of Sihagad, Solapur, but uh, I am uh, an entrepreneur now. I want to do MBA right now. What is most beneficial specialization, marketing or production or operation management? What is your take? Depends on the business that you're in, really, right? I don't know uh, if you can write to me what the business is. Uh, if, if you're in a manufacturing business, operations management. If you're in consumer business, marketing. If you're in you know, uh, finance, then finance. But I think for you to decide is a great time right now. Ki, do I want to continue putting uh, more time and effort into my business right now? Or is this a good time to kind of step away for two years? Uh, that is a decision that you need to make. Uh, but yeah, I wish you all. Okay, the next question is from Sayani again, uh, uh, Karan. Yeah. Sir, I am a fresher. How to better prepare ourselves before getting into a B-school and also after that, uh, get <coughs> out what to expect? So the market scenario, basically, she's talking about. <clears throat> yeah, so I think um, how to prepare for business school is obviously you have your um, CAT and all of these different exams that you're preparing for. I think put in your best uh, at this point of time. We all have a lot of time available also due to being locked down at home or wherever you are. Uh, so I think use this time effectively to prepare. Uh, like I said before, really, really use this time for introspection. Use it for self-reflection. Um, because it will answer a lot of questions that you are asking me. Do I need to get an MBA? What will I get out of it? What are the job prospects after that? If you spend maybe a few hours, a few days on thinking about these questions yourself, it will give you a lot of you know insight. Uh, but in general, markets everywhere globally are starting to get better. Um, we are hopefully have ha heard some good news regarding vaccines also in the last few days. Uh, and so I think we are, we are moving upwards, uh, hopefully crossing over this hump. Um, and I think we have better days to look at. So I think we should all be very 
um, optimistic about the future. We should aspire to, I think, do better in our careers in whichever way and form. Uh, and I think you opportunity is plenty, right, outside. So I think, uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, this is the last question, Karan. We'll be taking for today. Yeah. Uh, Nitesh says, sir, is there any business which you have thought of and what wanted to pursue? it but couldn't do uh, because of some circumstances or uh, maybe you want to do that after some years down the line like an entrepreneur um no i wouldn't say i have thought of something but was not able to pursue it i think for um, for us as a company we've we've in the last three years been very uh, successful at uh, some inorganic growth, which has been an exciting journey for me as well, since I have been leading this initiative for our company. Uh, we have recently got into the electric mobility space, uh, which is very, very uh, new, uh, high technology product, uh, et cetera, et cetera, has been, you know, I, I has been a, a dream of mine to kind of say, uh, we, we need to go higher up in the value chain as we go right from one product to some sub assembly to a bigger to a bigger and bigger and hopefully a car uh, maybe one day. Uh, but I think through this company that we have acquired in the Netherlands, we are, you know, providing customers and customers with really fully electrified vehicles, uh, com commercial vehicles. So I'm very excited for this, this uh, venture and we're looking for some new um, products to be launched in India as well. So very excited for that. Right. The questions are simply not stopping current. Do you want to take one last question? Do one last. Yeah. Okay. We'll take one last question, guys. One last question. And it's from Rohit. He says, yeah. uh, sir, is this pandemic a right time to go for MBA? Would you advise that we should get only into tier one colleges uh, so that placement isn't an issue? Yeah, I think it um, is a good time. Uh, a lot of... Um, uh, a lot of schools uh, are, are, you know, providing some great programs who are, which are, you know, tailored to today's needs. I think they're, uh, you know, in the past where you had very fixed programs, fixed curriculum, etc. You know, now you have, you have these hybrid programs where you don't have to always be in classroom. You can continue to work. You can continue to while still studying. Uh, you have the opportunity to do one-year programs instead of two-year programs. I think that's a great uh, opportunity for somebody to say, Ki, I don't make two years out of you know, my career, out of uh, earning money. Right? So these are options that you have available. I think based on where you are in your career would be an interesting time you know, for further sharpening your skills through a, through a program. And I would not, obviously, I would not say only apply to tier one programs and only try to get in there. There are great colleges across the board. Some are uh, better at certain things than others are. Uh, but like I said, go back to that same category of three levels of colleges and shoot for the best, right? Don't, don't settle. Right. If you settle saying that it's in my home, it's easy to go, it's very that's that's easy, right? That's uh, and I can easily get admission, then that's easy. But I think you should shoot for the best. And if you don't get it, it's a different thing, but at least you can try. Right. So, uh, log ne questions pooch liye, Karan. I have two questions from my side. Okay. I hope you don't mind. No problem. First one is uh, your fondest memory of Harvard <coughs> Business School. Since we talk so much about HBS, what is your fondest memory of Harvard <coughs> Business School? So that the learners can also uh, create memories when they go out uh, in the institute for their greater learning. Yeah, maybe there are a, there are a couple. So one, I think I would like to talk both. So one was obviously um, we uh, we used to travel a lot while we uh, you know on weekends during the breaks etc. So uh, I got to spend a lot of quality time with very close uh, with a lot of people who have become some of my closest friends now. Uh, so I think traveling, seeing the world, uh, while still, you know, being engaged, uh, I think one of the things that I cherished the most while I was there is that being always 24-7 intellectually engaged and having that stimulus because there is no, uh, you hardly anybody will let you take, you know, let's think about something bigger, better, newer, etc. So that, those are memories that I cherish. Um, Besides that, there was a really interesting project that I was able to be a part of. Uh, you might have heard of Richard Branson with the Virgin Group. Yes, yes. Uh, he has an incubator in Jamaica, which is, you know, a few hours flight away from Boston. Uh, and there, there they train young businesses, startups, very small companies with five, 10 people 
to really become you know uh, trained to become good me and one of my friends were able to be part of that richard branson school of engineering and we were able to write cases on four of the businesses that were there uh, which were then later used at school so opportunity to go there you know talk to businesses who are at the lowest end of you know at grassroots level businesses in jamaica understand how they work great experience and i don't think i could have got it anywhere else besides there amazing amazing karan so the last question that comes up from my side and uh, it is from the entire uh, an academy what uh, advice would you like to give to all the learners out there who are uh, uh, who are going to pursue mba yeah, i think you are in for a um, great program a, a great education uh, i just my advice always is to make the most out of it while you are there uh, i think you can there are so many opportunities available online offline at the college with your professors with your peers with your alumni and just make the most out of it and come back i i, I if i have to give you an example when i graduated from 12th standard in solapur i was not the same person i am today i can guarantee you that i was a very shy person i would not talk to people very much very introverted i would say uh, but experiences like this like the business school experience really opens you up in ways that you don't know you can it really pushes you but let it do that right let it push let it push you and challenge you and you know make the most out of it and i think all the best for um, whichever schools you are applying to amazing amazing karan thank you so much for doing this with us uh, you are truly an inspiration to all the thank young you generation so entrepreneurs out there and thank to you. the people who want to achieve their dream uh, with uh, so much of hard work and dedication so uh, this was mr karan shah uh, executive director of precision camshaft limited guys this was an academy scat for mba please do not forget to like this video share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel So Karan before we part ways for today once again I would heartfully thank you for doing this session with us thank you and, very much uh, there is a small yeah. ritual that we do yeah. at the end of uh, every session yeah. we have a tagline that uh, we live as it by our anthem and that's let's crack it yeah. i want you and me together to do that uh, small sure. thing before we end the session surely so on the go of three let's do it let's crack it together okay yeah so that's one two and three let's get it. it thank you so much karan for doing this you oh, have a fantastic all, evening ahead yeah and wish you all a very happy diwali in advance also yes, uh, from the team of an academy wish you also thank a very you. happy diwali and to all the learners out there thank you so much for joining us for today's session have a great evening ahead guys thank you so much let's crack thank it thank you let's bye -bye. crack it bye, -bye. <laughs>